Hi everyone, my name's Courtney. I write under the pen names Lyra Parrish and I'm one half of the USA Today bestselling duo Kennedy Fox. And it's Monday and I'm rolling out a new series on my channel that's called Q&A Monday where I answer all of your burning questions. I asked you all to ask me anything and you came through on YouTube. Some people had four, five, six, eight questions each and also on Instagram, I got a lot of questions. I got 75 responses, but I think I got maybe over a hundred that I need to answer. And so I've decided to make it a thing and I've decided to record them in remote locations. How pretty is this? It's really nice out here too. The weather is not killing me in Texas. If you look down below this video, there is a Google form where you can submit your burning questions and I will answer them all. If there's something that I'm asked that I don't feel really comfortable answering, I will still read the question and then I will say, hey, I don't feel comfortable answering this because this and this. Some of the things people have asked, I can pop through it really quick. Other things may take a full video and that's why I've decided to make it a series. So make sure if you're not subscribed, I am inviting you to join this little community and yeah, expect a lot more of these coming. I've probably got enough questions to last me through the middle of November and whatever y'all submit now will be added on to that. But I'm super excited about it and um, I think it'll be something different but still publishing related. The first one comes from Stephanie. It says, how did you and Deep Sky Dude meet? So we met in college when we were 19 and that's when we started dating. I was playing Marty Maricino in Grease the Musical and he was in the band. He was one of the guitarists and we've been together ever since November 17th, 2002. A long time, but musical theater stuff. And he's not a theater kid, he's a musician, but you know, the theater is just so magical and we fell madly in love and lived happily ever after. And the next question is, did you always like to write? I would say yes, I liked to write, but I didn't always want to be a writer. I had a teacher in high school who took me out in the hallway and told me that I should pursue an English degree because they needed more English teachers who were passionate about it. And I was like, lady, I, that's, no, that's not for me. And then I had a professor in college who did the same thing and pulled me out and said, hey, what is your major? And I was like, oh, I don't know, a business degree. And she asked me if I thought of pursuing literature and writing and I was just like, nope, not for me. And I graduated with my two business degrees and then I realized, hey, I think I might like to write. I think that that would be a fun thing to do. It was just kind of like a random thing. I think the seeds were planted for it and that I had so many people encourage me to go for it, but then it was just like a random thought one day. I was like, hey, I wanna write a book and I didn't know anyone else who had ever done anything like that and um, here we are. Here we are today, 30 books later, but I think I like to write, but it wasn't something that I ever thought that I would pursue professionally as a career. Things sure do change, don't they? Next question is, how do you decide what to share versus what to keep private when it comes to social media? And I mean writing, personal, hobby related things. For me, I just share whatever I wanna share. Like, I don't typically worry about it that much. I try not to flex online, so I'm not like one of these people who's gonna be like, oh, look at this thing I just bought, or look at this expensive vacation I just booked, or blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't like doing that. I also don't, always share when I go out of town just because I don't want people like who know me in real life watching my videos waiting for me to announce that I'm gone so they can go and rob me. I got cameras around my house. For the most part I just try to be myself and try to be a very authentic version of myself and treat people online like they're my friends. And so if I would say something to my friend, then typically I would share that online. Uh, most of the people that I know in my real life know that I'm not a bragger. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, well we did this and we did that and blah, blah, blah or whatever. Like I'm very like, uh, it's not that big of a deal. And so I think online for the most part, I'm like, oh, that's, that's not that big of a deal. Like I have no reason to just have brag fest. I don't do that. With my personal life, if it's something that's really affecting me, at some point I'm not going to be able to cut it off. So like all that stuff that happened with my dad and having to grocery shop for my mom every week because she doesn't drive and like my brother not helping me and not having a family support system, like those are the kind of things that I can't help to share because they affect me in such a personal way that it comes out in pretty much everything that I talk about. And when it comes to writing, I think that I'm pretty much an open book. I talk about 
about my struggles typically like on Instagram I'll talk about things like when I was working and writing full-time how hard that was if it's a strategy thing that me and Brooke are trying to test out and we don't want people to like jump on it before we can actually test it like we'll keep strategies kind of secret and not announce it but other than that like I don't have anything to hide I just share whatever I want and sometimes it's stupid stuff sometimes it's things that people don't even care about but I look at social media as like a timestamp so when I see things come up in my memories that I shared I'm like oh yeah I remember how I felt at that point in my life so I kind of use it as like a history book I guess I would just share what you're comfortable sharing and not everybody is as open as I am online not everybody talks about personal things or whatever but I'm just kind of like well, if these people knew me in real life, they would know exactly how I feel, so it's okay. It's fine. This question is, if one cannot afford to pay for book covers, is there a program you would recommend? So when it comes to book covers, I would say that Photoshop is fantastic. It takes a lot of time to learn. It's not something that you're gonna pick up today and be able to make a cover in tomorrow. There's a lot of different things to learn. It's not impossible, but if you want a book cover that is competitive and you don't know how to use Photoshop, then you're gonna have an issue. I would say that if you really can't afford to hire a cover artist that does your genre like really well, that everybody's using, that's $500, cause cover design can be very expensive. I would go on Fiverr and I would look there. I know people who have tested covers that people from Fiverr had made and they have done really, really well. And I'm talking about 15 to $50 is, is how much you could expect to spend on a cover. And most of them give you the PSD so you can make changes. PSD is the Photoshop file. So you can make changes to it after you work on your Photoshop skills. So Fiverr is a great place if you really can't afford it. Just remember you need to be able to have a cover that can compete with the ones that are selling really well online. So make sure you do your thumbnail test, stack your cover next to them. If it sticks out like a sore thumb, then you need to start over. And a lot of them will give you unlimited amount of changes for like 30 bucks. So if you wanna test covers, if you wanna change covers and you don't wanna spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars, go find someone on Fiverr. There's plenty of people out there who do a really great job. The next question is, what are your thoughts on writing competitions? I think writing competitions can be a really great thing and it can help put your name out there if you're trying to build a brand. It's also good like if there's local competitions in your area, it gives you a little bit of notoriety in your local community and things of that nature. I would say that I would not ever join a writing competition that wasn't from a legitimate organization. There are some shady ones out there and I would just be very careful where you are submitting your work. I know Romance Writers of America have them and a lot of the other organizations where you pay dues and stuff have them and they're a really big deal. So so I think that they're a good thing. I haven't personally joined any writing competitions, but I don't have any negative feelings towards them unless it's like some scammy thing where you don't really know who you're sending your book to and it's not a legitimate competition and there's no history. Like I would steer clear of all of that. If you could have any of your books adapted for film, who would you want to direct it and whom would you want to have star as the MC? So for me, I would say Chuck This is War. For the MC, I would say Shia LaBeouf because, oh my God, have y'all seen him lately? And direct it, I'm not very good with movie stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and admit it. So I would have no idea who I'd want to direct it. Next one is, you have made yourself a successful career writing in the romance genre. If you were to have any extra time on your hands, what other genre would you write in and why? So I really love contemporary fiction and thrillers. And when I decide to go the traditional publishing route because becoming a hybrid author is one of my dream goals, it's been on my top 10 list since 2013. I think that I would want to write in one of those genres. Something that is very commercial, very sellable. I love thrillers. I love the whodunit aspect. I love those twists and suspenseful plot points. And I also love contemporary fiction where you see the characters grow and the reader actually learns something from the book about themselves and so I love those two genres and if I had time I would definitely write a book to pitch to agents in either one of those genres which will eventually happen I just have no idea when that will happen the next one is what are some of the principles of self-publishing you feel new authors often overlook so I think one of the things that 
new authors overlook or don't realize is this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. People will publish four, five, six, ten books and they don't break out and they're like, I'm a loser, nobody likes me, the world's against me, or I suck, I'm just gonna quit. And they quit too soon because they didn't see the success that they instantly wanted. It's a long-term thing. It took me nine years of writing and working full-time to be able to do this as my actual career. People get impatient. And I think that sometimes you have to like take a step back, look at what you're doing, realize that this is going to be a forever thing and that there is no real end game and that you have to keep going no matter what. And when you break it down like that, it's like, oh, well, this book didn't do very well. It will be a great backlist book. And when I do break out, people will go and read those books that didn't sell very well right now. So I think it's just important for newbies to have patience and realize that you don't know it all. And sometimes you need to sit back and do research and learn your genre and learn what you're doing. And eventually all the pieces snap together and you're like, ah, oh, I get it and then you move to the next level. Another thing is some authors look at this like a get rich quick scheme. Like they're gonna go out there, they're gonna publish their first book and they're gonna make a million dollars and they're gonna be able to quit their job. And that's just not how this industry works. For some people it does, for the majority it doesn't. And you just have to really dive deep and look inside of yourself and ask yourself, do you really want this? and how hard are you willing to work? And if you're willing to work really hard, I think that you can be really successful. But at that point where you're like, oh, well, this wasn't handed to me, I'm gonna try something else, then you weren't in it because you were passionate about it. You were writing because you thought you would make money and it doesn't always work out like that. So you have to know your why and you have to refer back to that often. Why do you wanna be a writer? Why do you wanna publish books? And every once in a while, pull up your why and be like, am I still staying true to my original why? Has that shifted and why did it shift? And when you do find success, don't let it get to your head because it's always fleeting. You may make USA Today bestseller and then you may never make it again. You may make New York Times and then your next book doesn't sell. Like, you never know. You start over every single time you publish and it's always been like that, for me at least. Every time you publish another book, it's starting from ground one and going up through your marketing and your writing and your editing and your promotions and all of that to the publishing date. I mean, I've never gotten to a level where I can just, you know, write a book and publish it. There are some authors who get to do that. They're very lucky, but for the majority of us, you still have to work hard even when you are selling really well. It doesn't ever get easier. You just understand how it works. So it's not as hard. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay guys, I think that this video is long enough. I am going to cut this one off here. I really appreciate y'all coming and watching this. I've got way more questions and you will see many more next Monday. Remember, if you have any burning questions you want to ask me, please fill out the form down below in the description. If you randomly think about something at midnight and you wanna know the answer, please fill out the form. I'll be happy to add it to my list. But that's all I have today. I hope y'all have an amazing Monday. Y'all have an incredible week. You accomplish all your goals and you write all the words and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye guys.